Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. We are live and in the house today on the Sisterhood of Sweat podcast. We have clean eating diet, Tosca Reno, New York Times bestselling author. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her. So here we go. She um, She's a New York Times bestselling author of Behind Your Best Body Now and the Eat Clean Diet Series. She is also a certified nutritional therapy practitioner. She is also a fitness model columnist and author of the Eat Clean Diet Series. Tosca Reno graduated from Queens University with a BSc and from Toronto's York University with a BSc. Ed, She writes the monthly Raise the Bar column for Oxygen and is on the magazine's advisory board. Tosca gives motivational seminars across North America and writes many articles on training and nutrition for mag magazines such as Maximum Fitness, Reps, and Clean Eating. She has published a number of health and fitness books, including Tosca Reno's Eat Clean Cookbook, which was nominated for the 2009 Gourmet and World Cookbook Awards, and the New York Times bestseller, Your Best Body Now, Look and Feel Fabulous at Any Age, The Eat Clean Way. Welcome, Tosca, to the show. Hey there. So nice to be here. Um, I should probably update you a little bit. I no longer contribute to Oxygen Magazine, but did do for quite a long time. Um, and of course, there's a story behind that. So uh, <laughs> without further ado, we'll get into saying hello to your guests. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome, and we'll, we'll edit that out for the podcast, so it'll be all right. Okay, okay so um, I am so excited to be talking to you. Uh, I was so impressed. I have all of your books, and <laughs> I I was just, you were such a fit inspiration for me, um, because I am going to be 55 in September, and I just watched you, followed, you know, you from being overweight, going to, you know, being a mom and, and losing a ton of weight um, from, I don't know, did you lose around 80 pounds or 85 pounds? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I was just so inspired that in your forties, you yeah. became this sensation on the cover of every magazine. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Well, that kind of blew my mind too, because from, uh, you know, my vantage point on the couch, eating ice cream and getting myself obese, actually, I could not have envisioned a life like that at all. Um, but I, I recognize that I had dimmed my own light. I wasn't really showing up uh, as my true self in that hidden state you know I, I wasn't really my true self so just something about switching on the desire to uh to change my life to become healthy not only for my purposes but also for my children i wanted to set an example for them um you know i think i was one of the first you know 40 somethings who was competing uh in bikini and, and fitness model and actually i didn't even start there i started in bodybuilding so but um, you know, so I, and I think it gave permission to a lot of women to do the same. Uh, they they might have been thinking it was just for twenty somethings, and then the next thing you know, there's just this whole um, genre of, of women that that are in their forties and starting to compete the way I was doing, and and that's where I found my voice. I started writing again, something that I had let slip away, and yet it's it's you know what what feeds my soul so much. Uh, so it kind of blew my mind that all of these things sprang from just the simple desire to change my weight and become healthy for my children. Um, it, it was just really remarkable, quite a, quite a, quite a ride. <laughs> quite a ride. And, you know, I know a lot of women out there may be at that point right now where they may be struggling with their weight. They may have lost a little bit of their identity because they're so busy being a wife and a mother and a worker. Yeah. Do you have any advice to them how they can start the same journey that you took? I feel that's such a common perspective for so many 
not only young mothers, but um, women who are in the caretaking, the sandwich generation, where they're looking after young adults in their family, young children, and also their parents. Uh, and that was essentially happening to me. And I had traded my independence and my freedom and even my fire. You know, I put my own fire out by doing what I thought was expected of me. Uh, but I wasn't happy. And, and the unhappiness, the, the disconnect was what was leading me to fill myself with this unhealthy food and attain that unhealthy weight. Um, you know, to, at my heaviest, I weighed 204 pounds. I remember looking at the scale at a Weight Watchers meeting, just like, what is that number? Who am I? Um, so the only antidote for fear is to take action. Sitting in your misery, making the cycle bigger and wider and, and hurting yourself that way isn't going to help. And so it's taking action. And what inspires you to take action is to find the spark within you, that thing that makes your heart sing and go back to that. And, you know, it's funny because we're sitting here today, you and I, um, with, we're not dolled up. It's Friday. I, I did an hour and a half workout. I'm literally making a wet spot on my chair because my butt is wet. Um, I, I've got people running in and out of the house, fixing things. This is a typical day for me. Life goes on. It's reality. I yeah. I don't pause the universe to make Tosca Reno come out. You know, I'm me all the time and I share that truth, whether it's my sweaty, you know, hour and a half outside in the rain workout, whether it's, um, you know, I had to get a smooth, I made a shake this morning to get through my day. I, I can't put makeup on to look pretty for this session. I'm still here. And my story yeah. doesn't change just because I have a pretty dress and some false lashes on. <laughs> well, yeah, you're raw. We're both naked. <laughs> I feel naked because I usually wear makeup. We're raw. We're Ooh. real. <laughs> and we have taken off the mask because I think so many of us, have gotten used to wearing a mask we forget what real is right and what yeah. authenticity is and so i love that don't be afraid of it don't don't wait for the right moment to get to your perfect state I, in fact i think getting to the perfect state the perfection itself is boring the journey is the thrill and believe me it'll take you for a ride because <laughs> it's not all straight and it's not all perfect there's a lot of ups and downs but that's life, right? And with those less, I call them lessons of contrast, the ups and the downs, it becomes very clear that what you do want and what you don't want get into sharper perspective as you go. So I never look for perfection. I think that's boring. I look for what, what juice am I going to get out of this ride? I love that. Yeah, I think a lot of us spend too much time um, trying to be perfect. And you're never going to be perfect. So no. you will feel like you're never measuring up. So being real is so much more of a joy instead, just being you. And that's what makes you stand out anyway, right? <laughs> well, I think so. I mean, I will say this, when I'm attending the upcoming World Fitness Expo or the Women Who Influence Luncheons, you know, I, I, I will probably take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I understand. I might do that. <laughs> I have had a shower, but in your honor, I did not wear makeup. <laughs> and you know what? That's a re that's a rarity. I love I, I love my, I do love my makeup. I like to enhance. Yeah. yeah. And my girls are used to seeing me even at my 5:45 a.m. boot camp with some a little something on. <laughs> <laughs> well, mad respect. Thank you for, uh, you know, standing beside me naked. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I may try this more often. <laughs> yeah. It would save it. a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really followed a lot of your clean eating diet. And um, can you describe to the listeners, what does that mean? What is clean eating? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, and I, I, the reason I'm glad you asked is because everybody and his brother is talking about eating clean and everybody claims they're an expert, but I want to share this 
with you and your listening audience. And thank you so much for this opportunity. You know, Robert and I built the Eat Clean Diet on this table. Now have a look at this table. This is a long table. I love it. We sat together elbow to elbow and we wrote the first Eat Clean Diet book and we built it. And we went out year. This was in 2006 is when I wrote it. We went out. I was traveling probably two thirds of the year doing shows, appearances, seminars, talks, workshops, talking about eating clean. I was the product of my own product. I worked it, lived it, breathed it. If you want to know what the real eat clean diet lifestyle is about, always look to the expert. And since I founded it, I feel pretty confident in saying that I'm an expert. And what it is, is it's a lifestyle way of eating where you eat clean, whole, nutrient dense, properly prepared, well sourced foods. You're avoiding all the refined stuff, but you're eating things that are natural and whole that provide the whole package of nutrients too. Because when we segment something out of a grain, we're not getting the whole grain, we're not getting the whole synergistic system of what's supposed to be delivered to us. So that's what eating clean is. It isn't all this stuff that other people have made up. It's not um, a, a new orthorexia. It's not any of that. It's, it's eating properly. It's not even counting calories. It's not starving yourself. It's actually nourishing yourself back to optimal wellness. You'd be shocked at how much I eat. <laughs> oh, well, it's the volume, right? Of what you're eating, there's more volume, but less caloric intake usually than some yeah, of the bad although, things we could eat out there. We get confused. Like, and that's another thing. I don't count calories because I think it's very confusing. If you're going to focus on calories only, um, I never, yeah, the third there never is, that. you know, fat is a nutrient dense food. I'm going to eat fat. In fact, I eat quite a bit of fat. I will eat one or two whole avocados a day, coconut oil, nuts and seeds, fish, fatty fish, um, oils, all the rest of it, nut butters, full fat, uh, kefir. Um, and then I'm, I'm not afraid of fat because what I know to be true about fat is though it's caloric calorie dense, it satisfies quicker. So a tablespoon of coconut oil is going to hit your satiation center in your brain really fast and it's going to keep you full longer. So you can't have the egg white without the yolk. It's not going to work. Um, so I, I don't really get too hooked on the idea of counting calories. It may be useful if you're trying to understand what your baseline intake is, especially if you're an overweight person or if you're a competitor. But I think for the, for the most of us, it's absolutely impossible to really find out what the true caloric value of any food is. We just don't understand it. Well, yeah. And I, I don't count calories either. We basically fit, focus a lot more on the quality of the food right. that we're eating. And I agree with you on the fat intake, um, especially as we start to get older. I really feel like it helps with your hormonal health yeah. and your brain health. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so if we, if we just follow diet trends and say, Oh, and we must count calories, you really, robbing yourself or bankrupting your body of the very nutrients that you need as you age you want to age well and you cannot have a you can't have a proper hormone unless you have some fat and i don't know about <laughs> you but i intend to enjoy my hormones long into life <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and uh, what you said about the satisfaction the satiation you know in the brain you know that so it it lets you know that you were satisfied. I think it really diminishes cravings so yeah. much when you add good fats to your diet. Amen. <laughs> so on the eating clean diet, you're not really eliminating any food groups, correct? Uh, only one. Okay. The refined foods because okay, in, good. I like that. Process and refined foods. We are destroying the integrity of the nutrients and that whole chemical network that they've built within the nutrient or the, or that food to deliver to us. So those are the ones I avoid, especially the refined sugars, refined flours, all of those foods that are really kind of questionable. And what does a typical day of eating look like in the life of Toscarino? All right. Well, so, so today, um, now I did a, I did an hour and a half, um, interval workout. So I, I went hard. I did cardio and, and weights and did, and did hits in my weights. 
So I knew that I can't work out on a full stomach, but I need something. So I did a, a pre-workout, um, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, it's, it's called Amped. So that, that helps me get through the workout. Okay. Uh, Isogenics. It, it Isogenics. Is a, yeah, I, I have that. I don't, um, I, I don't use any products that have altered sugars in it. Like I'm not yeah. really on the sugar to get me through. I found that the branch chain amino acids are excellent and L-glutamine, which I also put in that workout shape. So I'll have that and I'll have a couple of liters of water. Um, then my um, breakfast meal, uh, all summer long, I've been eating a lot of overnight oats with um, – whatever fruit is in season and also flowers. I've been eating a lot of flowers this summer. <laughs> um, I've I never eaten a flower. Love. Yes. Um, I have to try that. They're, they're absolutely amazing. I just feel like when I'm eating, um, so a lot of nasturtiums, for example, they come in orange, yellow, uh, beautiful colors. And when I'm eating them on my, my breakfast cereal, it's just, I feel like I'm eating this explosion of, of energy or something. Anyway, well, that's, that's that's so interesting. Now, what do, what are the what's the premise of eating flowers? I mean, what do they do for you? Be They're just like plants. They have a full oh. antioxidant range. They're loaded with phytonutrients. Many of them have essential oils, which when we ingest essential oils into our body, we're raising our vibrational energy and getting the glow from the inside out. Okay, well, today's not maybe a great day to judge, but um, but you know, I will have probably as many as 15 to 20 blossoms a day. And I just put that either on awesome. my cereal in my smoothie, I'll Vitamix it, or I'll have them on, them on my salad. And they're just lovely, lovely, lovely. So that's what I'm going to be doing on my, one of my now, food. Do you grow your own flowers and just, yeah. wow, you, you were teaching me something new today. I'm going to have to try this. So at the upcoming World Fitness Expo in Toronto, uh, one of my sessions is I'll be demonstrating how to make some of these foods with flowers. Oh, wow. I bet it makes a meal look really pretty. Oh, it's, I, you know what? I show up everywhere. When I'm invited to dinner, I'm going to dinner tonight. I'm going to make a salad and I'm going to have it covered in blossoms. And even if it's a really crappy salad, it looks amazing. because. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, are they raw? You don't cook them then? No. No, just right off as if you were eating berries. Just pick them off the vine and manja. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I cannot wait yeah. to try this. Yeah. Now, of course, you're rinsing them off, right? And well, the flowers, I don't. I just check and see if there's any bugs. I'll shake okay. them a little bit. But, you know, and well, and lots of people in the world eat bugs, but I don't really want to at the moment. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't wash them. They're so delicate and fragile that when I pick it them. Would yeah, I wondered yeah, about that. They're just beautiful. And, and you know, we, we actually, to enhance our gut microbiome, we need to be eating more raw, natural things. So yes. a raw flower with a little bit of whatever's floating around in the air, well, you know what, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of research on the microbiome, yes. and uh, I'm drinking some kombucha right now. <laughs> love the kombucha. I make kefir every day. Oh, awesome. You make it yeah. yourself. I make it myself. I have um, 3,000 year old Turkish grains. So you need the, the grain and then you ferment the milk with the, with the kefir grains. And, and those who cannot drink milk doesn't matter because what happens is the um, living, the friendly organisms in the kefir grains actually digest the milk and break down the lactose. And it's, it's totally harmless. But the crazy thing is, kefir has tons of tryptophan in it so it's it kefir oh. actually means feel good yeah and it confers immunity and protection to your digestive tract for cancer how amazing oh, is that that is totally so, amazing yeah so I, are there any brands of kefir that you recommend out there um is this a, a north american audience or canadian uh, yeah, we're in the U.S., yes. Okay, so um, I don't know. I always look for an organic one. We have brands up here called Organic Meadows. Okay, uh, we have that. Yes, yeah, so, okay, so so full fat, organic, plain kefir. Don't get the stuff with all kinds of whatever in it. But okay. honestly, honestly, like kefir is the easiest thing to make if you want to try it yourself. 
You can buy the kefir grains at a Whole Foods. I've seen them. And if you can ignore things very well, <laughs> then that's how, <laughs> that's how you make it. Because basically you just mix the grains with the milk, shove it in a dark, warm closet. Don't even put a lid on the jar. Boom, boom, boom. Things happen. The next morning you have kefir. That's amazing. Now, do you have any recipes for making it online at all that people could follow? I'm, I'm going to be unrolling some of those over the course of the of the World Fitness Expo up here. So, the, And that's going to be, yeah, I've been sharing on Instagram as well with pictures of my flowers. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Bringing something new to the horizon at, with yeah. the flowers for sure. And the, right. I know the kefir, like I've tried it before, but I did not realize everything that you said, how, yeah. how amazing it is for you. Yeah. So, on, on top of the probiotic effect, right? Because oh yeah. You know that, I mean, and yes. It's a drift, different strain of bacteria, friendly bacteria than yogurt. So kefir will add um, an extra diversity into your microbiome. And that is what we need to do. We need to expose ourselves to more friendly bacteria. So we get that diversity in the gut because that's what health is. If we only have one or two strains of bacteria, that's not healthy. We need hundreds, if not thousands. Oh, absolutely. The gut is so important to your overall health and, and it, also your emotions, your mind, because the yeah. gut is the second brain and I know like I take Dr. O'Hara's probiotics faithfully. That is my favorite go-to. And I also like you, I incorporate kombucha, um, yeah. some fermented, like some sauerkraut, um, yeah, all kinds of things because um, when, you know, it even makes a difference not only to the way you feel, but I mean, you know, mentally, emotionally, um, but just even your weight, like, you digest your food so much better if your gut is healthy. And when that's happening, your bowels are moving correctly. Yeah. Oh, well, absolutely. This, this very moment in the United States, particularly um, two thirds of the population is constipated and that includes <laughs> babies and youngsters. And they're because they're not eating enough variety in those bacteria to help the gut, nor are they getting enough fiber, nor are they getting the diversity in their fruits and produce. They're just not getting enough fiber. So when we can introduce these little tips into the, I feed my grandbaby kefir. She loves it. <laughs> she wants mine. <laughs> well, yes, absolutely. And when you're, you're taking in the healthier gut bacteria, like when I drink my kombucha, I literally, Thanks for sharing on live, but I go to the bathroom almost oh, yeah. like in a half an hour, you guys, after drinking this. So if you have tummy blow, I'm telling you, look it into works. taking care of your gut health. Yeah, absolutely. I, I travel with my probiotics. I have to, otherwise I'm just not happy. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> wow. <not. laughs> absolutely. And so tell me just a little bit, I know you at one point, uh, how did you meet Robert? I mean, what was that whole story? Robert Kennedy, um, you know. Okay, so um, this was in uh, 1999. I made a decision to go back to school because I wanted to leave my then husband, but have a career in place so I could properly take care of my daughters. I didn't want to depend on society to take care of me. I'm going to work. So as a mature student, I went to school, became a teacher, and I was actually teaching Robert's daughter grade one. I met Robert on the playground. He would bring his daughter to school. Um, and so I got to know Chelsea first. Um, and that would have been in 2001. And, you know, I taught for, I really, I basically taught for a year. And I never did any more teaching again in that sense of the word. Because the next thing you know, Bob was like, we're going to do a photo shoot with you and we're going to do this and we're going to, you're going to compete. And, uh. <laughs> um, and we had an amazing chemistry. He was a definitely an entrepreneur, very charismatic, had visions, dreams. He could make things happen. He could make careers happen for people. Uh, I didn't know who the hell he was, you know, everybody around <laughs> him was, I just figured, well, he's that little girl's father. I didn't, I really didn't have any idea. But I was 
on the way to healing myself from my overweight situation and had been working out. And so <laughs> I remember one day saying to him, cause he said something like, Oh, do you work out? And I said, yeah, you know, I go to the gym every day and I'm losing weight and I, I just want to look good. And, you know, I had this funny little look on my face and he said, if I had a dollar for every person who ever said to me, they're going on a diet and want to look good, I would be a wealthy man. And he said, as you can see, I'm not <laughs> because nobody <laughs> ever sticks to it. <laughs> and that was all he had to say. It was like waving the red flag at a bull. <clears throat> I just went for it. And I, I got to see the difference between a body born out of cardio and a body born out of weightlifting. And I love lifting weights. I just totally switched on when it came to that. And he saw in me the potential to shape a body and maybe even shape a personality that could be uh, a mentor for many women of my age going through whatever they were going through. And that's really how it happened. So we, we trained every day. He got me ready for my first bodybuilding contest, which was in, I was 42. So that would have been 2002. Um, in Vegas, oh. <laughs> and we never looked back. Yeah, it was, it's, uh, it was a crazy ride. Well, I love that. And, you know, you left a, a marriage, you, you were unhappy. Um, and so also you stepped into yourself and into, I mean, happiness and it had to be scary to leave a marriage behind that's 17 years or more. Yes, it was 17 years. Okay. But it, well, it was scary. And this was not I hadn't met Robert at the time when I made the decision to leave. And the reason I made the decision to leave was because I felt dead. And I felt like I wasn't setting a good example for my daughters and that I needed to save my own life first if I was going to be of any value to them. And I think when you make a decision to step into your truth, the ripple effect happens, the butterfly effect, right? And, and the closer you come to your truth, um, you know, all of a sudden things start happening. And I became, I, I was just switched on. I think I was reborn. Um, and I, I stepped into, into who I was always meant mm. to be. I finally found the courage to do that unapologetically, you know, because all my life I apologized for being tall, broad shouldered, you know, too smart to this, to that. Enough of that. I, I, I became me. <laughs> And, and what was the catalyst that just woke you up to that? You said you felt dead inside. And was there anything else that just kind of um, spurred you to? It, well, one day, um, this was when I was still with my first husband, the father of my children. We lived in a very old Victorian home and there were very narrow, steep steps to get up to the top level. And I was going to say goodnight to my girls. And I was so overweight and unwell that I collapsed on the stairs and couldn't get up the stairs. My heart was slamming in my chest. I was in a big sweat uh, and I was disgusted with myself. And I thought, if I can't look after myself enough to look after my own children, I just want to say good night to them. What good am I? What, what is this about? This madness has to stop. And I, that was the day. And I'm a cold turkey kind of girl. You know, I made the decision. And I, I changed everything that I knew how to change the next day. But as we know, wellness is a journey. It's a process. It's built by hundreds of healthy habits and layers of effort, not one thing and I'm done. <laughs> right. And it's basically, I think, uh, life is an adjustment, too, from birth to the grave. So, you know, you start, you, you had that lesson, you got through it, you stepped into like amazing life with with Robert Kennedy. And then, you know, then you had tragedy and, and how did you make it through the tragedy of losing a child and losing your husband? I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot to go through. Uh, yeah. And it was, you would think that loss on its own of people that you love is enough of a blow, but there were so many layers. Um, for those who don't know, um, my stepson, Robert's son, but I made no distinction between stepchildren. No, I, that's why I call him a child because yeah. I thought you had to treat them all like they were your, right. your own. Um, Brayden was brain injured in a car accident at the age of 11. And basically he and his mother took her life because she couldn't cope with that. So I was on the scene when Brayden came home from the hospital and 
we, he, he was my child, but he taught me so much, but he, his, his life of living, uh, unable to move anything in a bed, um, you know, at, at some level that doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not quality of life. We gave him what we could, but it, it's not quality of life. And he passed at the age of 24 in 2011. Um, literally a year later, Robert passed from lung cancer and it was, that was a shock. I, no one saw that coming. A year after that, I had to bankrupt his business because he had been insolvent for five years, his publishing business. That took my business down. And then I discovered that everything that we had, the house we lived in, he had leveraged against the bank so that there was just debt after debt, millions, multi-millions of debt. So your question is a good one. How do you survive that? How do you? Um, and many would reach for the tried and true alcohol, or I could have gone back to my ways of numbing myself with food. But I, I had my, my self-care habits so well and truly entrenched in my day-to-day -day living that while I couldn't eat for a little while, just the, that's how I react when I'm overly stressed and, and I was grieving. Um, yeah, and absolutely. really the shock of all the, you know, the truths that were coming my way. Um, for a while, I just couldn't eat, but I, I worked out and I ate good, clean, healthy foods. I didn't stray into alcohol, chips, drug addiction or anything like that. I probably went even more into exercising. In fact, I competed um, a year after Bob passed away. Um, but I learned something really important. And this is the kicker. This is the kicker. I was doing, I was doing the eating clean. I was doing the exercise. I could do, 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 but I had shut my emotional self down. And according to the World Health Organization, wellness isn't built on just the absence of disease. It is exercise, it's eating well, I call it eating clean, also taking care of your emotional health. And so I would say that it was really two years, three years after Bob passed away, where um, I, I spiraled, I, I, spir I, I, I couldn't sleep, I was really, I think, hitting the heaviest part of my grief. And I, when the teacher is ready, this, or sorry, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And I have um, a group of beautiful women who were, she was my yoga teacher, basically. And, and she just said, you need to join this, this meditation group. And through her, I learned the practices of how to take care of my emotional self, which was a heavy job. Some of the heaviest sets and reps I've ever freaking done in my life was lifting the chains from my heart and learning how to trust again, because I had a really tough time trusting. I'd been burned very badly. So I would say that now, all of the work that I do with the clients I coach, when I speak, um, when I'm lucky enough to be on air with people like yourself, I, I focus on those three pillars of wellness, the eating, the exercise, and the emotional piece. And I meditate every day, I journal, I get real with myself <laughs> and you know what I do too? I get raw and ugly and, and honest. And you know what, if I'm not perfect, well, you know, this is the way I am today. And somebody listening to this podcast will be switched on by something we say, or because we didn't glam ourselves up and it will reach into someone's soul. And I recognize this is how I'm supposed to show up today. And I'm good with that. And I love that. I love that. And that was such a great, I mean, answer from the heart, straight from the heart. And there are a lot of us out there. I mean, we reach a certain age, everything doesn't go according to plan all the time. And, you know, you may find yourself a widow or, you know, you, you know, God forbid, you may lose a child before you go. And so I think finding methods to cope with that are so vital to your health and 
I mean, it's, it's all encompassing. It isn't just what I eat. It isn't just what, you know, exercise I can do. It's, it's how do I feel and what is going on with me emotionally? Are my relationships good? And, you know, like you said, sometimes you get burned and then it's, it's also that process of learning to trust. Right. And so we go through so much. And so I do think like what you said, the exercise, the eating, that goes a long way to the things you deal with and being able to cope. Yeah. But I think like you said, the meditation is a whole nother piece. It's another piece for sure. And I've learned that language is the emotion of the cell or, or feelings are actually the emotions of the cell. So we need to care how we feel. And when we're in situations that don't feel good, we should acknowledge that we have the power to discern that and walk away. And so I'm learning how to do that. I used to be a pleaser. I mean, I would, yes, of course, but I'm learning how to say no. And no is a fabulous word. (laughs) (laughs) I learned it recently too. (laughs) And I was like, I kind of enjoyed it. I was like, whip. Yeah, I can say no, exactly. So yeah, yeah, so it's been, um, I, I can look back now and I can see the, the pain of losing Braden and Robert and the business and my business and all of the things we knew. I can see that pain as now being some of my greatest tests where I could learn what, what do I need to know in this moment about this? How can I now be more empathic to others who are in situations that are untenable? And so this is the book that I'm writing, really, because we don't have a one-on-one on on how to deal with shit. And pardon me, but... (laughs) (laughs) Hey, uh, we're raw and real today. It's okay. (laughs) We need need that. You know, how do you cope when you lose it? How do you cope when you lose a child? How do you cope when you lose the love of your life? Robert was the love of my life one minute healthy as can be, pressing out 500 on the plate loaded leg press, the next minute stroking out on the floor and we learn his brain is full of cancer. Like that's a, you know, WTF day. That is one of those days. And then how do you cope? So it really is one little step at a time. And it's, it's not about hating yourself or hating on what, it's about just owning what's happening and really sitting it with it some days and letting it weigh on you and percolate and understand this is, this is real. This is happening. I need to sit here and I need to feel it. I need to own it. And maybe one day it's just a real shit day. And the next day I feel fine and that's okay too. However it's supposed to be, it isn't cute and it isn't pretty, but woman after woman after woman has been asking me how to do this. And so that is why that's, that's my next book. Well, I can't wait until that comes out because I think it is a needed. I mean, it's very much needed. And like you said, you do have to allow yourself to have time to grieve and feel, and it's okay. You don't have to be happy all the time. It's okay to have emotions and let yourself just feel. I think that we, that's another part of us feeling we have to be perfect. Like society makes you think you have to be, you know, a vision or, you know, in this box and that you can't step out of it. So I really uh, commend you for, you know, the way that you've come through it and that you found the gift in your struggle. Thank you. Thank, that's a yeah. beautiful way to put it actually. Yes. Cause that's what it is. That the, there are gifts and I'm very blessed to be here. I, I'm, Every day that I wake up, I just, wow, it's another day. I'm here. This is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) And I, (laughs) you know, that's the truth. My dad used to say, I'd say, how are you doing today, dad? And he'd be like, hey, every day above ground is a great day. (laughs) (laughs) And so So. that's why, you know, when people say to me, how do you get motivated every day to hit the gym and work out and sweat? And it's just, I don't want to. And I think to myself, I watched my son lie in bed he couldn't move for all the pairs of shoes he couldn't wear out i wanted to wear out 
thousands more. And I felt the privilege of being able to use my body. So movement to me is, is liberation. It's freedom. It's medicine. It's, it's almost more for my brain than it is for my butt. I, I feel so alive. People actually tell me when I start working out, they say that I, something just overcomes me and I just look very different. And I, I think I just switch on somehow. So I never look at, at, at weight lifting or running or any aspect of moving my physical self as punishment. Oh no. I think I, I love doing it because I know the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have some new projects in the works and I also saw you had some type of a, a membership people could join on your page. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Well, I it really, I enjoy so much the, the, the one-on-one scenario of working with people, coaching them, appearing in their lives slash their mailboxes, you know, once a week. Uh, and so I set up a membership program. It's been a little bit painful learning about what to serve my audience. It's not an easy thing, though we do our research and our homework. Um, it's, it, it's a lot of work to get into the skin of the person who's looking for my help. But I love the opportunity. So um, the membership programs offer monthly menu plans, monthly training plans, daily um, motivation, uh, a, a community whereby women can get together and or men and uh, share their experience, which I think is so valid because women are the original algorithm as far as <laughs> the internet goes we were the first internet because when we talk people listen we are the influence right so um and and people really love those coaching sessions where i do one-on-one with them whether it's 30 minutes or an hour and i do too because i can get under your skin and understand the nuances of you so much better um so i have a lot of fun with that yeah so i think everybody should definitely go on to toscareno.com and check out her memberships, her eBooks, and you know, you. she has, how many books do you, have you written? I've, I've written 30, <laughs> probably, a few, probably a few more in the work somewhere there, but I, do. I think I might be behind then. I don't Maybe I don't have every single one. <laughs> well, some of them are eBooks also. So they're available on my website as well. But um, yeah, I, I'm really excited about the next one. I've been, I've had a little bit of an emotional block with writing and that's likely thanks to everything I've been through and having to process, but you know, I'm ready to be ready to be ready to write that now. <laughs> yeah. I think we do sometimes uh, get like when we have a lot of emotions going on um, until we've really dealt with everything. Sometimes you do get a block when it comes to yeah. writing because you, it makes you have to feel you have well, to exactly. And, but I also feel like there's thoughts up here, but when I'm trying to put them out on, the paper or on my computer uh it's like black sludge it's just not translating properly you know so um they took some time to just not write but i but i'm feeling on fire right now (laughs) hey i cannot wait to read your book and and i know like with the magazine and all that happening you know you have to also realize that the whole industry changed and it became digital. So, I mean, that was all part of it too. And, you know, you can't really help that. I mean, (laughs) no. And it was, it was painful because really my career was born in the pages of oxygen magazine. It was. And And I read every single column that you wrote, raise the bar. Thank you. And, and raise the bar was actually the most popular column in the magazine. Um, which I was very proud about because I really was speaking from my heart about my own experiences, but it helped so many people. And so, you know, to lose my place in the magazine, I found that initially excruciating. It was like another loss. It was like another loss of almost the magnitude of losing Robert and Brayden. I mean, it's not because it's just paper, but you know, in my heart, it was a, a very real experience and I really appreciated being part of that presence in oxygen magazine. So losing it was painful. I, I didn't really understand why, but you know, I, I know, I know now I'm not oxygen anymore. I'm something else. I'm someone else. I'm me. I'm always, I'm this person. And, and I can't be, you know, 
almost what 60 and, and on the cover of a fitness magazine with my booty sticking out anymore. I'm this Are is, you sure? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but but it's okay because it, that doesn't even matter to me. It, what I what really matters to me is how I'm serving to the best of my ability every day. And maybe that's a different way. So if I can set the example and I put my sweaty Instagram videos out and people love and enjoy that, or if I can, you know, write another book or, or help with coaching memberships, do appearances, all those things that I love, well, then that's how I'll do it. <laughs> and, and it's a transition. So you, yeah. you have been a role model to so many. So, by the way, there's so many of us that are transitioning to 55, 60, yeah. uh, you know, and so I would just say you can still inspire us all. You can, you know, just keep showing us the way, uh, you know, how, how we can raise the bar. And, That's what gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I know like some of the things I found kind of interesting that I was reading, um, uh, you, you had Arnold, I mean, it's a good friend. You have all these people that, yes. I mean, that are larger than life that yeah. are, you know, tell, tell me a little bit about what was, what is Arnold like? You know, um, I know he has a reputation at large that maybe suggests he's not a gentleman, but I've had no experience with him that would suggest otherwise. He's always been kind to me. Um, he was a friend to Robert. He, he visited our home in the final days when Robert was palliative. Um, he actually, you know, came to this very house and had Easter dinner with us and uh, went, we, we fooled around in the gym a little bit, you know, check, checking out the equipment and jumping on the trampoline. And, um, you know, so I've, I've had really good positive experiences with him. Um, and he actually coached me a little bit uh, from an emotional standpoint when I competed after Robert passed. Um, yeah. and, um, because I remember having a conversation with Arnold where he said, you know, so, so you're competing, so you're going to plan on coming first. And I said, no, no, I'll just, you know, I'll just compete and wherever I come is fine with me. He goes, no, 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 <laughs> you're going for first. And he, <laughs> wow, he had that talk that just there was no question that he was driving. Never. He said, you never, never, ever go for less than first. And if you, wherever you get is fine, but you always shoot for the highest. And so I changed my whole attitude about that contest and um, through him. And, you know, he's been, he's been a good and steady friend and Lou Ferrigno as well. Um, a lovely person. Um, Elaine Lillane. Uh, as oh, you I know, love her. Jack away <laughs> too, but Elaine, yeah. Yeah. Oh, lovely She's people. Yeah. So beautiful. So I'm very blessed. Yeah. Yeah. So you've had such a wide variety. I mean, you have just, I mean, so many great experiences and memories and, and you're going to continue on having more <laughs> and we all, you know, it's not what you go through. It's how you come out of it and sure. it's who you are, not what you are. So exactly. I, I'm just so thrilled that I have got this time today that I got to spend with you. Uh, you have definitely been someone that I have looked up to through, you know, just your whole journey, not just about fitness, but just your mindset, the things that you had to say to people. And so you have so inspired me on so many levels. So I just want to let, you know, acknowledge you Thank from you. the depths of my heart. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you so much. Well, you know, we're kindred spirits, obviously, because you have the same, I believe you have the same goals in your heart too. And otherwise you wouldn't have this amazing platform. And so the more that we can propel forward with our power, step into our power and, and use it to serve others, the better. Yeah. And, and the, whole reason, <laughs> the whole reason I started the Sisterhood of Sweat was just basically to, you know, to teach women that we need to build each other up instead of tear each other down yeah. and not talking about each other, but supporting each other and collaborating instead of hating and, you know, and just basically um, just have this safe place where we have our sisters, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I love that 
camaraderie because you know when you can tell when somebody's done the work in the gym you know because you can see the bicep or you can see the cut of the delts and and you just it, it makes you the same it's a your body is a language and you understand it and you're connected to that and and you admire anybody who's on the journey even if you're early in the journey because you're going to get there so do you have any um simple truths that you would like to leave with the audience today yeah Uh, you know, a simple truth for me that's just remained so incredibly strong and constant over the years is you got to find the thing that you love to do and do it and never stop doing it. For me, that's writing and communicating and reaching out. Um, and don't, uh, you know, I, I feel that so many women would rather say, uh, I don't have her genetics or I don't have her money. I'll never get fit. Don't discount the value of even a small effort, even a 10 minute walk, even a, you know, one less soda a day, because when we add up the small efforts, they all become something much bigger. So, so I think, you know, starting today, start now, give yourself some credit because the human body has an amazing capacity to heal and recover powerfully it, you know much much stronger than we we possibly even realize so somebody listening today who's thinking oh well these girls have been at it forever well no i started at 40 i was fat obese sick um and the the, the possibility is there for you too absolutely i totally agree with that i competed i started competing at 40 too That's 40 nice. as well <laughs> yeah. at, and um i'm still competing um, and I will be competing this year. I do, I actually do fitness and bikini and I'm going to compete at fitness America in November oh, doing in, a fitness uh, routine. In Vegas. Yeah. Oh my God, girl. Yeah. I remember I competed. That was on my TV show. <laughs> oh my gosh. All yeah. right. I'll have to look at the clip. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't wait to look that up. That's well, awesome. I will be. You know, I figured as long as I'm healthy and I can keep improving, I will still do the actual fitness routine as long as, you know, as Good long as you. I've got it, I'm going to keep going. Good for you. Good. Yeah. Well, well, you and uh, posted. <laughs> and uh, just tell everyone out there, where can they find you? Where can they reach you on social media and where can they get all things Tosca? You can visit toscareno.com and you can find all my social media handles there, but at Tosca Reno, um, I, I am there. Read my blog. I love to blog um, Instagram because I put crazy pictures up there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's um, Tosca Reno on Instagram, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And if you're in Toronto, Ontario, during the week of August 17th through 20th, I will be live at the World Fitness Expo at the Toronto Convention Center. Awesome. Just saying. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Sisterhood of Sweat today. And if you guys enjoyed this podcast, please give us a review in iTunes. Let Tuska know how much you appreciated her talk today. And thank you for joining and listening to the Sisterhood of Sweat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay.